السلام عليكم To begin with, I think we have to recognize that as Muslims, we are not able to accept involvement in anything that allows the continuation of injustice and wrong action. Now, many people will say, well, that means that we cannot be involved in the political system of this country. But maybe we need to think about this a little bit more. We cannot accept a political system or any other system that will allow the continuation of injustice and wrong action. We as Muslims are also required to stop the wrong action by our hand if possible. And hands have many uses, including pulling the little knob that registers a vote. And our tongue, which can be used in many ways, including educating people through political involvement, through community involvement, as to what is correct action. I do not believe there is any other place in the, con in the world at this time that we have quite as great an opportunity to institute change as what we have here in this country at this time. When we start talking about establishing a political agenda, I think we are in total agreement that we as Muslims have an agenda. Allah's agenda, Islam. What we need to talk about a little bit more is formulating a plan of action for instituting that agenda. There are so many things that we need to do, that we must do, in order to do what is required of us as Muslim. We need, first of all, to educate ourselves about Islam. One way would be to establish a series of workshops and seminars throughout the country that would be easy for Muslims in different cities to attend, to educate ourselves about Islam, to educate ourselves about what is in the Quran and what is in the Sunnah, to discuss the areas of misunderstanding and discuss the best ways of presenting them. We must not, under any circumstances, accept a compromise of our belief. But we need to understand our religion a little bit better ourselves. And we need to learn to present our beliefs to people. Our Islam is not enough when it is kept trapped in our heart where no one can hear it and no one can see it. We hide our Islam by our dress. We hide our Islam by our actions. And we're cheating. All of civilization, of this beautiful gift, we're very selfishly guarding it for ourselves and refusing to share it. This wonderful thing that has the answers that everyone is searching for. The people of the world at this time are suffering. Not just the Muslims, the people of the world are suffering at this time. Parents are afraid to allow their children to go out and play for fear the child will be kidnapped and molested. Women are afraid to walk on the streets for fear of being molested or attacked. Old people afraid to go out of their homes because they'll be beaten, killed, robbed. Strong, healthy individuals, nervous and spending fortunes guarding their homes with security systems because they're afraid when they go out of their homes they'll be robbed. People watching things on television and movies on the streets that they find extremely offensive and not knowing what to do about it being afraid to speak out because they don't want to seem to be bigoted or narrow-minded, 
So they sit and they suffer. Allah, we must learn how to sit and suffer. In Islam, we must try to change things for the better with our hands, where possible, with our tongue, where it's not possible to use the hands. Inshallah, just hear the Lord. We as Muslims want our brothers and sisters that which we want. We want our very best for ourselves. And we must want that for our brothers and sisters. We want our brothers and sisters. I shall remember Muhammad Rasul. They may be Muslims, don't know it yet. And we want for them that which we want for ourselves. Hayya ala salam. Hayya ala salam. Hayya ala falah. Hayya ala falah. Allah, we want our Not what is best for a system, not is what is best for a group of people, but what is best by the guidelines that have been set by Allah, because through those guidelines, we will be able to establish what is best for all of humanity. We need as Muslims to be involved with people, whether it is on the city level, the local level, the state level, the national level, or the international level. We as Muslims must be involved in people. See, there's three ways that we can change the world. One is by revolution, which has its own source of problems. And one would be to work within a system and make the changes from within. And the other is what I like to call attraction. Attraction and reversion. I advocate for the last, attraction and reversion. We want to attract the people with our noor. We want to attract the people to Islam through our example. And through that knowledge that they attain, to allow them to revert to being Muslims should they choose, keeping always in mind that there is no compulsion and that we as Muslims must guarantee religious freedom for all people, whether they choose to be Muslim or whatever else they may choose. But attraction and reversion revise, requires an involvement with the people. When you're involved in the political system on your local level to change the school system so that Sabi Hamid is allowed in the school, so our children are allowed to make Juma prayer, so our children don't have to participate in Christmas programs and Easter programs and Halloween contests and all of these other things that are very offensive and distressful to us. When you're involved in that, you're introducing people to Islam. You're introducing people to the truth. And you're helping to ensure justice in this country. When you're involved on a city and state level to prevent the passage of laws that allow injustice or to change laws that permit injustice to continue. You do this through the in introduction of Islam because Islam does not allow injustice in any way. When you're involved on the national level or international level, the way to do it is through introduction of Islam through your example, through you not allowing injustice to continue, through letting the nur of Allah to shine through our faces and through our actions, through our lives, to where the other people are attracted to us and would like to have that which we have. 
This is political action in the very strongest way. We as Muslims have an agenda. We have the agenda of Allah. But we need to work harder on getting the agenda to the people so that they have a chance to choose that agenda. Workshops to educate people about Islam, Muslims about Islam. Workshops to train Muslims in public speaking, in effective use of the media, and in how to and why to register to vote. Starting a voter registration campaign along with the education program to show the people how and why they should have their voice. This is required by Islam, that we use our voice to prevent wrong action. We need to choose the areas of initial involvement and concentration on the local, city, state, national, and international level. And then we start, after that, introducing Allah's agenda, showing the people that Allah, from the beginning, showed us what the solution was to every problem that is in existence. For there is no problem in existence today, or will there ever be a problem that is not covered in Quran and Sunnah. And we can bring this solution to the people, and they will be very eager to receive it. I stood before a Methodist church in Virginia a few years ago with a congregation of over 400 people and we discussed the issues of Islamic punishment. And in the beginning, they felt that the Islamic punishments were extremely harsh and that there was no mercy in Islamic punishments. But by the end of our discussion, almost the entire congregation wanted to institute Islamic law as far as punishment for crimes in this country. This is presenting Allah's agenda. This is giving people an option, an understanding, so they have an option. Right now, there is no viable option. They don't know where to look. They don't know where to turn. And we have this in our hand in the Quran and in the Hadith. And we have to learn how to share this. Every time that, that we are seen, every time that we speak, we have the power to change the system that we live in. But the power comes only when we speak truthfully, with knowledge, and with commitment. You have to know that if you speak and you are speaking without the knowledge and without the commitment that the people will not hear you and remember what you have said. The political system of this country is not as some people would believe evil unless you make the political system of this country your God. And then you and the system are both evil. The political system of this country is a method through which we can enlighten the world. The political system of this country is a method which we can use to bring peace to the universe. The political system of this country has great potential because it is a system that allows for growth and change. But if the growth and the change is instigated by people of ignorance, then the system will remain in ignorance. If the change and growth is instigated by people with nur, then it will become a system filled with nur. All success in this life and in the hereafter is with Allah. And when we start talking about setting an agenda, this is what we must keep in our mind, is that all success is with Allah. The Muslim people have an agenda. We have the agenda of Allah. 
Now we must reacquaint ourselves with that agenda, implement that, implement that agenda in our minds, in our hearts, and in our lives, and then bring that agenda to all of humanity. Because then, and only then, will we see a world of peace, justice, and tranquility. Shazakallah khairan. Salam alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. Alaikum as salam. All right, my question is regarding um, political involvement, and I'd like to direct it to um, Brother Islam. Now, as, as according to my understanding, in order to get politically involved seriously in any event on a national, federal, on a state or national level, we must align ourselves with a particular political party. And as I have understood, the Democrats' um, platform may differ with ours in certain respects, such as the abortion question, and the Republicans may likewise differ with our opinions as for foreign aid to Israel, for example. My question is, because I, in the future, inshallah, would like to get involved in politics, do we align ourselves with one of these political parties even though we differ with them on a particular thing, or do we run on, on an independent ticket disregarding the mainstream political party? Um, I also would like to say that um, this one is for Amina, Sister Amina. Now, according to you know, the media question and our involvement in the media about the Salman Rushdie question, um, I'm from New York, and in New York we had organized a certain um, a political, not a pol political action group, but a media defensive thing where we wrote letters to the publishers and we sent out all these newsletters. And even though we, we'd sent like thousands of letters to the publisher before it even became a big issue, before it was published anywhere, um, eventually it had been published in America and in other countries. And the comment that I'd like to make is that we shouldn't be discouraged, even though it seems like a failure that we put in all this effort and we didn't get the, you know, the, the thing that we wanted, the reaction that we particularly looked for. We did make an effort, and in that itself, that was something great. And we should be proud of that. And so many people say, well, there's nothing we can do about it because the Jews control the media. But I just want to make a comment and say that we should never be discouraged. And it's a gradual process. It won't happen overnight. And we should continue trying. And inshallah, God God will, Allah will guide us with his faith. So, thank you both answer. Just that microphone, Sister Amina, briefly. First, for the Salman Rushdie thing. Less than a minute, please. Assalamu alaikum. No, we should never be discouraged, but we need to learn to deal with the media more effectively than how we do at this time. I am a broadcast person, and I went into broadcasting after becoming a Muslim because I was devastated by the way Muslims were dealing with the media. The media is very important. And we have to use it, and we need to learn how to use it right. So this is what I am encouraging. We did use the media ineffectively in the beginning with Salman Rushdie. In the end, alhamdulillah, we became more sophisticated, more educated, and we dealt better with the media. We chose our people to deal better. We wrote our letters in better ways. And this is what we have to concentrate in dealing with the media.